a new approach to anemia has really been needed for some time in the setting of myelofibrosis, especially given that the anemia is often worsened by the only FDA-approved drug in the setting. So we are here to discuss Cetatricept with uh, Dr. Prithviraj Bose, who is an MD and a professor in the Department of Leukemia at the MD Anderson Cancer Center. And this is really tackling a long-time challenge, correct? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. What's the drug? Can you describe it a little for me? Sure. So Sotatercept is a fusion protein which consists of uh, essentially two domains. There's the extracellular domain of the human activin receptor type 2 and that's conjugated to the FC fragment of human IgG1. So it's, it's a fusion protein made up of these two constituents that then binds to and traps or sequesters these ligands that belong to the TGF beta superfamily, not TGF beta itself, but that family, and thereby in sequestering them, it removes them from doing what they would do, which is to bind to the active in receptor type 2 and suppress erythropoiesis. So this is a way of removing, if you will, some inhibitory signals uh, and that way relieve the suppression of, of erythropoiesis, terminal erythropoiesis. Now at ASH 2016, you shared some early data. Remind us of the trial and what you have reported prior to ASH 2017. Sure, absolutely. So this is a, tri is, is a trial, it's a phase two uh, open label investigator initiated trial that was initially conceived of as a single arm one cohort trial, just monotherapy with sutatercept alone. And that is most of what I presented last year, uh, when uh, most of the patients, uh, the vast majority, were receiving the drug alone. But seeing the activity in those patients, we realized that perhaps an even greater unmet need was the patients on ruxolitinib, which as you just mentioned is the only FDA approved therapy and actually worsens anemia initially. So, and this would be a way of counteracting that anemia and allowing patients to stay on ruxolitinib and optimize the dose. So these are all things that are sometimes limited by anemia. So that's when we added another cohort, which is the ruxolitinib combination cohort, and this year I reported on both cohorts. So what did you find? So in the monotherapy cohort, we've had 24 patients, uh, 18 of whom are evaluable, and we have a fairly stringent criteria for being evaluable on this trial. So you have to be on study for 84 days at least, or 12 weeks. And this way, you know, we uh, don't get to count certain patients who, let's say, have an improvement in the hemoglobin but don't sustain it or go off of the study for some other reason. So 18 patients were evaluable out of the 24 and 7 responded. So that's 39%. And then moving on to the new cohort, which is the combination cohort with ruxolitinib, that one has 11 patients of whom 10 are evaluable, so most of them, and 3 of the 10 have responded so far, which is 30%. So, so while it's possible to use Cetatricept in the setting of concurrent ruxolitinib, that really still needs more study, is what you're saying? Well, uh, well, sir, it's absolutely possible to use it. There is no toxicity concern uh, with, with using the two drugs together. And uh, I think, you know, if, if you look at the, the numbers are small, clearly. I mean, uh, but again, if you look at the responses, we are clearly seeing responses in both cohorts. Uh, and uh, I think, uh, you, you know, while you, you, it's hard to probably uh, focus too much on those percentages because the numbers are right. small, uh, I think this is definitely a very promising way forward and may allow people to stay on rucks for longer and optimize their dose. So where are we now? What's next? Um, so this trial is still under, underway. We uh, have 60 patients planned and we are at 35 like I presented. So our 60 would consist of 20 on Rux and Sotatercept and 40 on Sotatercept alone because there we are actually looking at two doses. That, but there are responses at both doses so I didn't really go into that. Um, but as far as the company's plans to develop the drug, they have a related, a very closely related molecule called Luspartercept. And that one, they have actually already completed a, fa a, a phase uh, 
three um, uh, uh, pivotal trial. They've completed a pivotal trial, but that's in MDS. That's in lower risk MDS. And they've done a pivotal trial there, obviously based on some phase two data that they had uh, that was promising. So they will now take that molecule into myelofibrosis uh, and anemia. In, a, in fact, that trial has just started. It's a multi-center company sponsored trial. It has just started and it's very similarly designed to our trial. So it's optimistic right now to think that there's something coming down the pike that could be very valuable. I think absolutely, because what we have for anemia right now, danazole, erythro erythroid stimulating agents and imids are not particularly effective. I mean, they are effective in some patients, but really not the answer, we feel.